Hello and welcome to the Wildlife Moto channel. So on today's video, I wanted to make a quick follow-up video after the big launch, the big announcement that Royal Enfield made earlier regarding the brand new for 2024 Bullet 350. Now, I uploaded a video on the same day that this bike was announced, and I have to say it caused a bit of a storm in the comments uh, underneath that video with a lot of people a a little bit confused that we didn't see a broader range of bullets announced some people certainly disappointed that we didn't get to see a new air-cooled bullet 500 and others a little bit confused at just where the bullet now sits in the range especially given all of the similarities that it has when compared up against the existing classic 350. So in some regards, it was a little bit of an awkward launch for Royal Enfield, but don't get me wrong, there was plenty of support for this bike, plenty of people saying that they're really excited about seeing the bullet back and potentially in the market to, to go out and get one. But what I wanted to do in this video was a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison where we can take a proper look at what we're gonna get on the new Bullet 350 and compare that to what we already see on the existing classic 350 because there's quite a bit to talk about here a lot of people as i said a little bit confused about where the bullet now fits in and why it really deserves to be its own model in the range now of course royal enfield has to have a bullet um but the bullet's always been the flagship it's always been the the, the kind of you know the, the the benchmark bike it's it's been the bike that royal enfield's built around it's never been a a version of anything else really so to have the classic 350 come out first and then the bullet kind of arrive being so similar to the classic 350 as i said it's kind of put rolling field in a little bit of an awkward position but what we can do in this video is compare and contrast have a look at what's the same what's different what's distinct about the bullet and hopefully that gives everybody that's potentially thinking about getting into one of these bikes a little bit more information to take away so let's start it off with the similarities and this is the stuff that's kind of irked a few people because they are just so similar in so many ways the engine the j series 350 is pretty much for all intents and purposes exactly the same engine as you are going to find in the classic 350 and i'm not massively surprised about that engines are extremely expensive to develop so why wouldn't you reuse your engine in multiple bikes and certainly we've seen Royal Enfield do a lot of that and that's perfectly understandable perfectly fine uh, it is the same electronically fuel injected single overhead cammed 350 you know <laughs> straight up uh, very basic 20 horsepower around 19.9 foot-pounds of torque units that uh, you get in both bikes the tuning might be slightly different on the bullet Royal Enfield have gone big on the sound of this engine, so they may have done something just to give it a little bit of a distinct bullet-esque thump. It certainly sounds a little bit more thumpy than the classic 350, so there might be a small difference there just in how it's set up, but this is not going to be a big change. Another area where we do not see a big change at all is in the frame for both of these bikes. They are both identical in terms of this twin down tube chassis that supports the 350 engine if we click into the classic 350 uh, 3d render here we can see that these frames are for all intents and purposes absolutely identical other areas of similarity include the front suspension and in fact this whole kind of headlight uh, shroud unit up here and these 41 millimeter telescopic style forks they are identical on both bikes uh, also the suspension units on the back dual shocks on both bikes with this kind of shrouded design uh, there are some subtle color differences on some of these models but they are for all intents and purposes the same shocks the braking system also the same we've got 300 millimeter disc brakes up on the classic 350 and that is the same affair on the bullet as well now some of these bikes have got dual channel abs and it looks like some of them have got a, a drum brake on the back that's uh, something you can find on the military black version of the bullet and the military red version of the bullet and if we look at the 3d renders over here on the uh, classic 350 i think this one yeah the uh the halcyon um black and the halcyon green version of this bike 
uh, with uh, a drum brake. And I think there are a couple of other models that have that drum brake on the rear as well. So you can really kind of take your pick in terms of what kind of setup you want to go for across both of these bikes. Uh, but there are a few different distinct features depending on what particular model you select. Now, let's talk about some of the core differences then between the two, regardless of what model you go for. Really, the big difference is in the tank design, a little bit more classic bullet-esque on the bullet, as you'd expect. And we get this bigger dual seat on the bullet. This is a single unit, unlike on the classic 350, which is a split solo rider seat with a pillion pad on the back. And at this point, it is worth making a, um, a small point of clarity uh, on my previous video, because I was looking at a lot of these types of pictures here on the Royal Enfield site where they show this bike uh, across the, um, the page as only having this solo seat. So I did assume at the time that it came like this kind of out of the box from the dealership. But uh, I have been reliably informed by uh, owners of this bike that actually you do get this pillion pad included uh, with the bike when you when you buy it from from the dealers, especially in the UK and the US. That's been confirmed. So in terms of that unique selling point I was talking about with the bullets being the one to get if you ride pillion or if you want to potentially strap soft luggage to the back of the bike using the seat as a platform. Well, that's not unique to the bullets because you do have that option on the classic 350 so uh, yeah it doesn't just come with the solo seats and in fact that kind of gives the classic 350 a little bit of an edge because if you want to get rid of this pillion seat if you don't use it if you want to go for that slightly more paired back look and you're into the whole bobber thing then you've got that option on the 350 classic but not on the bullets on the bullets you are always going to have this uh bigger dual seat uh, on the bike. Uh, now, I don't mind this at all. In fact, as I was saying on my uh, first video that I uploaded, I kind of prefer this chunky seat on the bike. I think it brings balance to the whole thing. I think it just kind of weighs out some of the heft from the front of the bike and just adds a little bit more balance to the rear. Uh, we've also got this slightly different design on the rear mudguard as well. It looks a little bit more squared off just a little bit more substantial, I think, on the bullet. Whereas if we go back to the classic 350, it seems to ride a little bit higher. It seems uh, that the uh, the cutout shape just kind of comes up a little bit uh, steeper above the top of the tire here. So we can see a little bit more of a gap there. Whereas if we go back to the bullets, it's a little bit more closed off with this being, I think, just a little bit more of a chunkier rear fender. And again, I think that just adds a little bit more balance to the bike. So to my eyes, uh, I prefer this kind of look on the back of the bullets than the classic 350, but that is very much horses for courses and a, a pretty small difference, not really something that um, a lot of people are going to worry about. Uh, other small things that I've noticed, this little side cover here, we've got a rectangle shape on the bullet and I think a slightly more pleasing oval shape on the classic 350. So that's just a little cover there that's hiding various components behind there. Um, it doesn't do a great deal. I don't know if they're interchangeable, whether you could change them if you wanted to, but um, just another small design difference there between both of those models. So really outside of that, and they are quite small things, as I said, they are for all intents and purposes, the same bike. Some people have asked, are the handlebars different on these bikes? I, from what I can see, I don't think they are. Uh, I think they both share pretty much the same bend there may be a small difference but nothing that immediately jumps out switch gear as well uh, looks very similar on both of these bikes so outside of the tank design the seat design and a couple of little differences in some of the uh, bodywork like the rear fender and like this little cover box here very very similar machines indeed now where you can get kind of creative with this is in your choice of the the kind of model that you go for because there are a few differences so for example on the bullet range the only bike that you can get uh, with the blacked out engine is the black gold version and i think for me personally this is the pick right this is the one i would go for i love the blacked out rims on the spokes i love the blacked out engine having owned an interceptor with a raw alley engine i can say Royal Enfield engine cases are 
a little bit subject to corrosion if you don't stay on top of things. So I think, I don't know if this is a Cerakote or something like that. I think this would probably help uh, with that and certainly make it a little bit less labor intensive to look after it. And I just, you know, black and gold, right? You can't go wrong. I just think this is a beautiful color scheme. And the fact that uh, you can't really see it in these 3D models, but there is a matte texture to some of this paint here, which goes into a kind of glossy black here on the side. I just think it looks absolutely lovely. So that is a unique version of this bike that uh, definitely gives it a very distinct look and feel. Over on the uh, classic models, there are versions of this bike that have the black tile engine. In fact, more versions of the bike than on the bullet. Uh, so if we just flick through some of these uh, different options here, we've got the Halcyon Black, which has the maroon, gold and black scheme. Uh, we've also got details here across the front mudguard, the Halcyon Green. But as you start cycling through some of these options, we see the whole uh, set of bodywork changing on these bikes. So different color shrouds for the forks and the headlight unit, the uh, front mudguard, rear mudguard as well, all kind of get updated in line with that particular look. And then if we go into the, the desert look, this is definitely something that's quite unique, that kind of sand, sandy look and the um, kind of military numbers there on the side of the bike. So again, if you like this kind of slightly more military-esque look and feel and the blacked out engine, you've got these uh, signals, desert sand uh, options to go for here and the signals marsh gray as well. I think that looks really, really cool, especially with the blacked out engine. So yeah, I'm a big, big fan of that. And then, as I said, if we go into the uh, stealth black version of the bike, this is where we get alloy wheels on the classic 350, not an option that you will find on the bullets anywhere. So none of those bikes have uh, alley wheels. Um, so yeah, you've got it on the stealth black and the gun metal gray. And then we go back to spokes for the, I think for the rest of the lineup here. Uh, personal favorite of mine, I think this one's you know, possibly the most classic of all, the chrome and red. It's an iconic color scheme for Royal Enfield and just, yeah, it just looks absolutely fantastic on this bike. So for me, if I was getting a classic, this would probably be the pick of the bunch, if not maybe one of the military versions, but yeah, I like that. I think that it's really cool. Also on the classic, we've got the beaked headlight design, the little kind of peak here. If I can zoom in on this, you'll see that uh, I think all of the classic 350 models have this, whereas over on the bullet range the only version that has it is the premium black gold version any of the others we revert to a uh, pretty standard round headlight which does give it a little bit of a different look but i think the um i think the peak headlight really suits this bike i think it looks absolutely amazing so um yeah that's that's definitely one to go for another interesting option that i quite like in the bullet lineup is this maroon version this is the only option uh, that I can see where when you select it, you get that kind of color coding across the rest of the bodywork, like the uh, fork shrouds and the, um, the headlight unit and all that kind of stuff that all gets updated. Whereas I think for most of the bikes, uh, it stays black, right? So um, that's the only option on the bullets if you want to change the rest of the color of the, um, the bodywork. So a few small, subtle differences that are prevalent across the different models that you can choose on either the bullet or the classic 350. If it was me and I was buying a bullet, as I said, I would probably go black and gold for the bullet. And over on the classic 350, I'd uh, possibly this one or possibly, I don't know, quite like that as well. I think that would look really good in the flesh kind of gray military style. I think that looks pretty nice. Don't know, um, but lots to think about. Clearly I prefer the black engines because they're uh, in, in, in place on both of these. Interestingly, and I didn't realize this, uh, some of these bikes actually have uh, drum brakes as an option. So on the single channel classic 350, actually do like that green color. That looks pretty cool as well. Uh, there's a drum brake, look at that drum brake on the back of that one. And on the bullet, we've also got options for drum brakes, if you prefer, by the looks of things on these 3D models anyway. If we select, I believe it is either the, uh, yeah, the um, military black or the military red, we get good old fashioned, classically styled drum brakes on 
various versions of the bullet if what I'm seeing here is correct uh, and assuming this model is correct. I really love this, by the way, from Royal Enfield, the fact that you can you can create this kind of virtual showroom and get a proper look at the bike without having to go to a dealership. This is this is pretty cool. I like this. Um, I have to say this version for the bullets, because you've got the whole showroom style thing going on, it's um, a little bit clunky on my computer, whereas uh, the uh, classic 351 is a lot lighter. I think it's a little bit more of a basic 3D model, so that's easier to use. Whereas this one uh, can get a little bit glitched out sometimes. So there you go. Um, that's really the core differences between these two bikes. As I said, in terms of things that you can't change, it's the tank, it's the seat, it's these little side panels. These are these are all going to be standard features that are distinct to either the Bullet or the Classic 350. And then outside of that, really, it's just a case of cycling through the models and finding uh, the the version that you prefer the best because certainly in terms of the stuff that really matters the engine the chassis the suspension the brakes you know they're all going to be pretty much one of the same regardless of what bike you get so anyway i wanted to make this video just to kind of clarify that and to put these bikes side by side to help you out if you're considering the options for either of these two models um, if you're up for, uh, you know, a good old fashioned 350 with classic styling, probably the closest thing you can get to a proper classic bike without doing something stupid like trying to rebuild your own. I mean, what kind of idiot would do that, right? Um, <laughs> then this is probably the easiest route into, you know, a, a proper kind of classic feeling machine in a modern world. You know, it won't break down on you. It'd be relatively easy to maintain. For me personally, um, the, the Bullet brand is something that holds such significant weight in motorcycling. So I think for me, over the two models, the Bullet would be the one that would find its way into my garage. Uh, but I do think it's slightly weird that Royal Enfield uh, have, have essentially made a, a, a flagship bike now a kind of a rebrand. It, it doesn't sit quite right with me. I, I honestly believe that they should have released this one first and then made the classic 350 the one that was the reversion because you can kind of get away with that uh, so yeah i don't know if they did that quite right but it is what it is that's what we've got that's the way it is as they say and uh now we know the, dif the, the, the key differences so um i hope that's been useful anyway that's it for now thank you very much for watching until the next one ride safe